Oh, shalom, Rastafari. Greetings. Okay, let's just let these windows come open. Okay, there we go, right there. Alrighty. Amen and amen. This season, this tabernacle season, is so extraordinary and is so very, very special. As some of y'all already know, my brothers and sisters, I would like to even really to share with you or share with those who are willing, right, to hear. Because some might think that, you know, we just, you know, we just like to record videos just to record videos. No, it's because there's very, there's a lot of needful information. And when our Father blesses I and I with that understanding, with that knowledge. I can share it with those who are willing, as his Majesty says, what life has taught I. You know, you like to um, share with those who are willing, you know, those who are willing to hear. Those who are not, I don't know why they waste their time on this particular channel. But anyway, brothers and sisters, there's a extraordinary, well, you already know we're in the blood moon, what's called the blood moons, um, this uh, season 2014 to 2015, I think the last uh, time that this happened, it was circa, what was it, 67, 68, that's around I and I Earth, and I Earth Strong, and then I think prior to that, it was uh, 43, no, no, it was 48 and 49, 1948 and 49, and then prior to that, was uh, 1493 to 1494. You know, that's significant as well. 1892, 400 years from that particular number, we have uh, um, 1492, right? And when we know who we are and, and the missing parts of our heritage, right? As uh, once lost but now found Beta Israel as as the so-called the African, they call it, I think, on one of the tags that we usually use on the YouTubes. All right, let me see if I have that tag over here. I want to share with you what this tag says. This is an interesting tag. We use it on some of the vids, All right? And this tag, basically, let me just read it over here. I'm at the other. Okay, the history of the Jews. It says, in the African diaspora, and this is on the ethnicity, very interesting, the history of the Jews in the African diaspora. So that always comes up when we type in like black Jew or black Jews, that particular analytical tag comes up in the YouTube. So we're in a very special Shabbat season. And the reason for the season is the the feast of, of tabernacles or Sukkot. Right, Sukkot comes from the Sukkah, the building of the Das Baal or the Metzelet, Metzelet, right? The Metzelet, right? And that's speaking of the huts. Actually, it's huts, or they might call it booths, right? The building of the booths. And so, what I wanted to share with the eye is because this is a special Shabbat coming forward on the third and fourth. Let me get my notes over here. And if you go to the Rastafari uh, Groundation, RastafariGroundation.com site, you'll see we had updated that. I think that was on the 28th, right? That was uh, September 28th when we updated that, the daily Parsha, you know, daily Torah portion readings and feedings. So this is a special Shabbat coming up for the 3rd and the 4th. And there's readings for the third and the fourth, because we, especially the males of Israel, right, are to stand, right? We are to stand before him, right? We are to stand before him. Let's uh, move this over here. It's interesting. I forget which page. Um, this is like a Rastafari Hebrew brother Ben right here, or one might say Jewish, right? But we are Yehuda-ish. So we're supposed to stand before him, and that's Deuteronomy 16, 16 to 17, two verses right there. But we want to announce beforehand, we have a couple of, uh, actually a couple of days, that's going to be like Thursday, 
evening, right? Thursday evening and Friday. Actually, what's the third and the fourth? Actually, that's going to be the Friday and the Saturday. Let's just bring up the calendar right here because there's a lot of information here. We want to make sure that we have this right and exact to share with you. But I want to announce that if you don't find the Torah portion, the Torah portion reading and feedings, because this is Yom Kippur, right? Because this is uh, Yom Kippur, um, the Suryet, the Amrinya, the Suryet Ken, right? Or the Day of Atonement. There are special readings for I and I for this particular time, especially as the as the sons. We as sons, we have a special response ability, right? So, do we are we going to respond to the Wengale? Are we going to respond to the good news? Are we going to respond to the gospel? Or are we going to be unresponsive? And I hope and pray that we are responsive to the good news because this 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 season there's like a window you know when you speak when you hear about the windows in heaven and there are particular windows in heaven right you know literally yes scientifically the scientists are actually discovering a lot of these things the book of Enoch also spoke about it as well let me get a, a calendar if I can get a calendar right here I wanted to open this right here but this doesn't seem to be opening up right here just wanted to find out, you know, um, in fact, let's, let's do this like this. I got a lot of information here I want to share. I'm trying to be uh, judicious with this. And I'm, 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 I'm in such wonder and awe. We, we call this the days of awe. Right? I'm in such wonder and awe as to how all of this is, um, right? how all of this is uh, lining up for us, right, for us. Right, both as the Jews, the Hebrews, the black Hebrews, or what is it, the history of the Jews in the African diaspora. I guess that's what they want to call our ethnicity. We are the redeemed Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelites, and we know that our atonement has already been secured, right, for us by our black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach. So I was standing. Right? What is our standing? Check out that series. Watch that series again. What is our standing? Right? Do we have a good understanding? And I want to share this with you so we can gain a a good uh, under right a good understanding. So actually, the third is 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 um, I think that's the Friday right there. The third is the Friday because on the Shabbat right the Shabbat day. Shabbat is uh, atonement, the day of atonement. Now, for us, it's a memorial. It's a remembrance, right? To keep our and our minds stayed on he, on he who be who he be, his divine majesty, and I and I, black Lord and Savior, Yeshua, ha Moshiach, right? So we have actually the third, the evening, the third is the Friday. So the Yom Kippur fast, Right, it begins an hour before sundown on Friday, October third, and it lasts for twenty five hours until an hour past or so that what's called sundown. So really the earth of course changes, but what appears from an earth perspective to be sundown on Saturday or on the Kedame, the Amarinya Kedame, which is the Shabbat, right? Going down on that Sabbath, the Sabbath Eve, October fourth. Now, the, the sages, the Rebbe and the ancient ones, they stated that, and this is based on Leviticus uh, 23 and 32, interesting numbers, 2, 3, 3, 2. Like this year, this Hebrew year is 57, 75, right? But afflicting the soul, right? According to Zelewawiyan or Leviticus 23, 32, right? And this is identified as fasting. So the sages called this, you know, this afflicting of I and I souls. It was identified as fasting, right? As, as fasting and self-denial. What Yeshua HaMoshiach, I and I, Moshiach, Yeshua, our Savior, the Messiah, says, 
deny thyself, right? Um, this is not undertaken, and this is a note right here, because some of us can be a little bit excessive when we don't deny our way of thinking and ask for his spirit, ask for his wisdom, ask for his mind, right? It's not to be undertaken to punish ourselves for our sins, right? Because we know that our khatiyat, our sin nature, has already been at one for, have been atoned for in Yeshua HaMoshia, right? But it's our faith, right? It's our admittance in his name, in him, right? This is what the season is about, right? Recognizing what has already been fulfilled for I and I, according to the Father's will. But rather, the reason for this season and this special Shabbat that actually begins on the third, the third, which is the, the Friday, right? And then we have uh, the, the Saturday, which is the, or the Shabbat day, which is October 4th in this 2013 year. And it's based on Leviticus 30, 23 and 32, chapter 23 and 32, where it says afflicting the soul, right? Afflicting our feeling, our thought, our emotion, our will, our desire, our so-called psychology, our mind, right? To help us focus, right? This is to help us focus italy or totally, right? When I say in the ital, let's just say the total sense, vitally, well, completely on our spiritual nature, right? On our on the true spirituality, right? The spiritual side. Now, usually it's customary in some Hebrew and Jewish communities to light holiday candles, to recite what's known as the Sheche, uh, the Sheche Chayanu, the Sheche Chayanu, a certain prayer. And to eat a, a late afternoon meal with loved ones, um, the Saudat Mef Mafa Seket, according to some pronunciations, a meal of cessation, an hour or so before the fast begins. So there's like a meal before the fast, this fast begins. And it's also traditional, this is the key right here. It's also traditional, and this is going back to you know the root line of the tribe of Judah. Right? This is why we are Yehuda ish. Right? It is also traditional to wear the white clothing or wear white clothing as a symbol of purity. Now, this connects directly with Revelation, where it speaks about the white linen. This also connects with the redeemed Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite um, uh, uh, culture, right? our culture. And you can see that from some of the more historical videos of Ethiopia adorned and you know, wearing the, that, that white, you know, the white garm, the garment of, that's, that's identified scripturally as the garment of, of righteousness. So we see this connection right here between the so-called Hebrew, Hebraic, so-called Jewish, and our redeemed uh, Beta Ethiopian Hebrew. This is why Amos 9 and 9 and 7 says, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So the tradition states, right, the Masora states that it is traditional or proper to wear white clothing as a symbol of purity. The scripture teaches as a symbol of righteousness during Yom Kippur, right, or Astesario Seriet Ken, religious or holy services. Now, some married men, they wear what in Hebrew is called the kittel. Right, the kittel is is like a white robe as well. You know, I'm thinking about His Majesty. We see His Majesty wearing wearing that. You know, the, the I guess that's the shama, right? That shama, that shama that you see, that large, you know, the larger um, the larger Ethiopian garment, right? Because of the sanctity, the holiness of this, the kedisina of this holy day, right? Yet kedesa. And the talit, right? The the the, the talit is worn for the evening, what's known as the evening services, right? Now dressing in this way, right? What they call the cut lips. It's interesting. The cut, the cut lips. It's like what you know as a Sunday best, 
right? Or the Sunday blessed. The dressing in this way is intended, the intention, right, is 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 to some say to make us appear, right, pure and like the angels, right, on that level, you know, from, from a Jewish perspective. But the intention of that is to be as the angels and to put on the kings, the children, I mean the, the, the clothing that is 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 uh is proper for the king's children, right? There's clothing that is proper for the king's children, and there is clothing that is totally inappropriate for the king's children, right? And this is one reason why, you know, speaking on the clothing, the Ethiopian garments, I understood why it went over a lot of ones and one's heads and still does, right? We talk about, you know, being these particular people who we are and we're still you know, running around wearing like car can I, you know, you know, I'm just naming that right there, but still, but here's Zephaniah, the spirit woman, he's share with you Zephaniah right here. It says this in Zephaniah, right? It says this in Zephaniah, um, Zephaniah and them that are turned. Okay. Some, some, are, some are turned back from Yahweh, right? And there are those that, uh, that have not sought Yahweh, nor inquired for him. It says, hold thy peace. That means be silent at the presence of Adoni Yahweh, Adonai Jah, Rastafari. For the day of Yahweh, he who be who he be, is at hand. For Yahweh have prepared a sacrifice. This is Zephaniah chapter 1, and we're reading here verse 7. Zephaniah 1 and 7. And the name Zaphon is interesting because it means the mystery. The mystery of Yah, the mystery of God, right? For Yahweh hath prepared a sacrifice, a meswa'it. He hath bid his guests. And this recalls what Yeshua HaMoshia said as well. You know, like that, like that rich man, the kingdom of heaven is like that rich man, right? That Balabate, right? Um, who prepared uh, a wedding feast for his son. And how there were certain guests who were called to come to the feast. And then how a lot of them started to make excuses. They had to hang out with this one. They had business. They had that. They had family, so-called, you know, concerns or whatever else. And they could not come to the feast, right? So that parable there is also very important. We might go into that a little bit more, but put that out there for those who can receive it. Verse 8 says, and it shall come to pass... In the day of Yahweh's sacrifice. This is speaking of Yom Kippur. Right? This is speaking of that Yom Kippur. Right? Or Yahweh's the day of Yahweh's sacrifice or the fulfillment, right, of that sacrifice that I will punish, right, the princes and the Nugus children. Who are the Nugus children other than Ayanai's Rastafari? Let's let's speak uh let's be real, right? Israel. Right, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel, right, with strange all the strange clothing that we're running around wearing, right. And then we talk about oh, we need to get our economy together and everything, and we run around spending money on on garbage, right, spending money on garbage, right. Then here's what it says. It says verse nine: In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their masters' houses with violence and deceit. Who, who's our master, brothers and sisters? Are we filling our master's house with uh, violence and, and, and deceit? And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh, he who be, who he be, his divine majesty, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate and an howl from the second and a great crashing from the hills. <laughs> we'll get into this a little bit more. Let's just speak. The reason why we went here in uh, Zephaniah chapter, chapter one, right? was to focus on this verse to connect it with the clothing that is to be worn for such holy time, the kitalips or your Sunday, the so-called Sunday best, right? It says, and it shall come to pass in the day of Yahweh's sacrifice that I will punish the princes. Why it says the princes? 
well let's compare this right here and we're going to touch on the the amida right or the standing the kum right rise right rise to the occasion remember that sizzler song rise to the occasion right know that you are strong but if you're not in the king of kings christ how can you be strong you're still under the curse for disobedience they don't want to hear. They don't want to obey the gospel of the King of Kings. Deuteronomy 16. But I and I hope and pray better things of you all who are listening and taking notes and, and seeking, you know, seeking his will here. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. This is the gift of the males. Three times in the year shall all thy males appear before Yahweh Eloheka Amlaku in the place which he shall choose in the feast of one unleavened bread. And speaking of Pesach, Passover time, the spring time. And in the feast of weeks, Shavuot, 50 days after Pentecost or Pentecost, right? the giving of Torah, the giving of the law. And in the feast of tabernacles, the feast of ingathering. Right, the feast of ingathering, Yadas Baal, Metzelet, Metzelet in the Gutters. Basically, tabernacles, booths, or huts. Right, like a lot of those African huts. Basically, that's tabernacles right there. Mm. And they, speaking of we, the princes, shall not appear before Yahweh empty. There is a key, right? Shall not appear before Yahweh empty. And it says that we would stand, right? You see, but you cannot stand if you don't have a good understanding, right? If you don't have a good understanding. Let's move this over just to keep this in the frame right here. I want to keep this in the frame right here so you can kind of see. Let's move this over a little bit as well right here because that is what's at the top of it, right? You know? The arm of the Lord, right? The arm of our black Lord and Savior. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? <laughs> uh, verse 17 says, every man, it says every man, and it'll say woman and children. This is for us, brethren. Let's recognize. Yeah, sometimes we see things not going right, but first things first. Who is our head? Right? The Moshiach. Right? Don't worry about his head because we know his head is the father and the father has visited all nation and borne witness to that. So we're without excuse. Every man shall give as he is able, not as he is Cain, but as he is able, right? According to the barakat of Yahweh Eloheka, which he hath given thee. Now, this is interesting because this kind of connects right here. Deuteronomy chapter 16, right? Chapter 16, verse 16 and 17, right? We're to appear. Basically, we're to stand, right? You overstand? We are to stand before him. Now, you say, well, things are kind of difficult. You know, I don't know if I have a free will offering because this and that and yada, 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 right? Or some go to the other extreme. Oh, what they're going to do with my money. You know, that means you're already in the foul mind. You need to get out. You know, I need to need to go elsewhere. Go to Satan. Right. But if we're coming to the king of kings, this is the way, the truth and the life. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse 18 says this right here. Right? It says, but thou shalt remember. That means think about, meditate, meditate. Yes, I, I and I meditating. What are you meditating on? Violence and deceit? Or are you meditating on his word? in spirit and in truth, and in the Moshe, and in the authority of the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christos Getachin. Thou shalt remember Yahweh Eloheka, he who be, who he be, thy Elo, thy Chayil, Chaylih, I and I power. For it is he that giveth thee, I and I and we power, the ability to do what? Get wealth. All right? You'll call it what? Make money, make money, take money, take money. No. Make money, right? But he gives us the power to get wealth. Why? Why does he give us the power to get wealth? This is why we posted the vid about money matters. Go check that out again after this. Look at that again, right? Money matters, right? He gives us the power, free your mind. He gives us the power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish 
his berit, right? Because we're the real berit ish, right? Berit chadasha ish. <laughs> Establish his covenant, al kidan, his word agreement, which he swear, which he swore to thy fathers, which he swore to I and I redeem Ethiopian black Hebrew Israelite patriarchs as it is this day, verse 19. And it shall be if thou, if the I, brethren, do at all forget the king of kings, I and I father, Yahweh and Loheka, and walk after other gods, get caught up in some of this Hotep nigga shit. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, Egypt ain't going to save us. We, you know, we, we, we study Egypt to see, well, who we were, where we were at, and why we had to take what's good and went forward. You know what I'm saying? By the command of Yahweh Eloheinu, right? If you shall walk after other gods, right? I know this god is shit. You know, any of this other kind of stupid stuff, right? You know, or African shit. That's why right. we said those are other gods, right? We understand traditional religion and all that. It helps us understand the sociology, the psychology, and the history of what was what and how we get to this point. But you see, Rastafari is the refinement, right? It is the fulfillment, right? And we need to act like it, you know, do the acts of the Rastafari apostles and walk after other low limb, so-called Elohim, right? And serve them. And worship them. That means we give them some value along the same level as a teaching of his majesty. Are you cray cray? Right? Are you crazy? Are you sick in your head? Are you sick in the mental? Right? Here's, here's, what, here's, what, here's, what, here's what Musay said. I testify against you this day. And I, in that authority in the Moshiach, I testify against the I who are in the hearing this day. Whatever day. Whatever day, say this day, okay, it's that day, right? That ye shall surely perish. What does that mean? We shall surely be lost. Isn't this very interesting, right? Shall surely be lost, right? That's why niggas don't know. They, 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 I don't know. How could, why, why that happened to us? Why, why are they always doing this? Why that happened to black people? Why are they treating us this way? Why the world is this way? Why, 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 why? You know, they, they perish, they lost, right? Verse 20, to sum this up right here. As the nations, right, which Yahweh destroyed, right, before your face, so ye shall perish, so ye shall be lost, right, astray until you do, until you are destroyed, because ye would not, here's the key, right, would not do what? Would not be obedient, and so it says right there, you would not obey the gospel, the good news of the King of Kings in Christ. You would not be obedient to the voice of Yahweh Eloheka. You would not be obedient to the voice of Negusa Negest Abatachin, to the King of Kings, I and I Father, who says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So all you little silly asses out there talking, oh, the Bible, the Bible, talk about Christ. Yo, you, go, you, you already have perished. You just don't know it yet. It's the mercy. His mercy endure forever, right? But his grace, his time of grace, you know, has a start, right? And it has a fulfillment. And we don't know whether the fulfillment will be in this season. Even Satan doesn't even know whether this is his last 30, 40 days. This is his last moon on earth. He don't know that. It might well be, right? Whether it's the first trumpet or it's the last, right? So, this is an overview. Check out the, the the post that we posted up for this special, right? This is a special Shabbat. It's a very special Shabbat. It's an extra special, extra, extra, right? Read up all about this, right? For the Yom Kippur readings beginning on the Friday, right? The Friday. So ones might say, well, what's the Torah portion? How come the Torah portion reading is not there? Because... Okay, which one would you want? Just a regular Torah portion reading, right? Or that atonement, right? So uh, atonement trumps the regular reading, right? The regular reading. But we're going to also talk, touch on, that's going to be on the, the 9th and 10th, you know, coming forward. And then the Sabbath of the 11th. We're going to touch on those particular days and times as well. But first things, right? 
first things uh first things first right and and some of the readings right are Leviticus chapter 16 verses 1 to 34 I'm going over it right here but for those who um will follow up on this who really are interested go to Rastafari groundation.com and you'll see on the right hand side there'll be the link click on that link right there and you will see more information right on that as well and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to um you know do a couple more postings you know uh through this season you know through this season because the enemy the enemy really trying to come in like a flood trying to hit from all sort of all sort of angles right so excuse me if i'm not you know as on point as i would like to be i don't feel as though i'm on point but it's not about our feelings it's about our faith in yeshua hamoshia you know what i mean so tie that to the horn of the altar as well right so um i'm gonna pause on this right here once again in the amharic we say suryet Right, the good is astesurio, sarye, right, sarye, which speaks of the forgiveness, sarjet ken, forgiveness, right. So for us, it is focusing and rejoicing, right, in the already fulfilled, right, atonement of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of I and I, Black Lord and Savior, to the glory, for my part, I glory in the Bible, to the glory of I and I, Abba Father, Kedamawi Hala Salase. Amen. Amen. So Sir Yet speaks of forgiveness. It speaks of cancellation, right? In the sense of Yechat Yat Sir Yet, or the sin nature, the remission, right? Or the absolution. So all these are some very important key words as well. And I want to just sum this up with Isaiah 55. Touch on Isaiah 55 and 6, right? From our notes right here. Let's go into Isaiah Get your Bibles, your, your scripture, and bring a willing and attentive mind, a repentive mind, actually, right? Because if it's repentive, it's going to be attentive. If it's not, then you're going to have some deficit disorder, right? You, you, people are hard of hearing. They, 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 they don't want to hear this. It's, this bores them. So go elsewhere, right? You're two-thirds. You're probably two-thirds anyway, right? So go elsewhere. Right, if this ain't for you, guess what? It ain't for you. Right? I'm speaking this, right? You know, and sharing this with those who can receive it, whether they be Jew or Gentile, whether they be black or white, right? Because that's that's the will of our Father, right? That's the will of I and I, Abba in Christ. So, right here we have this uh, verse right here from Tinbete Sias. Felgut. <laughs> Urbom sale terut. In this verse right here, it says, Seek ye the sustainer, Yahweh, he who be who he be, Aina Abba Father and Yeshua the Moshiach, while he may be found. Call ye y'all, call y'all, y'all call, y'all call on him while he is near. If we go a little bit forward in this, as the Spirit is prompting I and I. Verse 7 says, Make the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Right? So it's about what are you thinking? Right? See, the wicked is his way, what you be doing. Right? The unrighteous man, his or her thoughts. And make him return to Adonai. Make him return to Adonai, Ja, Rastafari, in the Moshia, according to his way. You see, you have to you have to come in by the door, right? The door into I and I, Abba Father's house is Yeshua. Coming in any other way, you come in like a thief. And, and you know what happens to a thief. It, it arrests your development. Make him, or judges you, depends on what's what. Make him, or let him return to Adoni, and he will have mercy upon him. And to Eloheinu. And to our power, our source, our God, if you please. For he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon in abundance. Right? You not forgive a little. You know, like we might forgive other people a little. But no, he will pardon us. Because we're already under judgment. Right? We're already under 
a judgment. You, some people don't even recognize that right there. For my thoughts, verse 8, are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. So his way of thinking, this is what this time is for these days of, 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 of um, repentance or awe. Right? This is what these days are for. This is what this time is for. Right? And if you say, well, I'm already in the Moshe, I already accept him as I and I, Lord and Savior. Well, just check your standing, as Paul said, before you fall. Because see, some get over cocky and overconfidence, and they don't recognize that they have relocated where they're standing. They're no longer standing on the rock. They're standing on the sinking sand of their own thoughts, of their own ways and deeds. That's why he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, not there. So the rain comes down, doesn't go back up, right? But watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give, what? Seed to the sower. And bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish, fulfill that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. It's very interesting. This is this is Tinbete Isaiah, Isaiah chapter fifty-five, at verse eleven. It's interesting. The, the the spirit is focusing on the word and how Father is saying like His word and and like the word is the Son. Right? He sent forth His Son to be our salvation, to be to be our Lamb. Right? And that blood, right? That blood within the Hebrew in the Hebrew pattern is put right here on that mercy seat. Right, so the color of the cross, the blood of the cross, right, on that mercy seat right there, right? So it's interesting to see that link and that connection. So he already he already showed us the end or the fulfillment even from the beginning. Verse 12, for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with shalom, with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Check this out. Right? And here's, here's where the blessing, the baraka is coming. Right? The baraka, the barakat is coming forth. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. For it shall be to Yahweh, he who be who he be, for a name. And an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Yad Veshem. Amen and Amen. So, brothers and sisters, third, fourth, coming up this Shabbat. Very special, very special Shabbat. A very special Metasebia. Very special memorial, right? There are some very special thoughts that we should be thinking at the right time and be in that place in Yeshua HaMoshi and in that grace. And do not come forward empty-handed brothers, princes. Amen, amen. Shalom Rastafari. This is Wendem Yadin. And may Abba Father approve of this message. So much more I want to say. But may, may he fulfill it for the I and I and I. In mercy and in grace. Shalom.